So what was found is that is a few things. One is that um, patients who are in the T effector high subgroup, so an inflamed subgroup that you would imagine is more susceptible to immunotherapy, indeed did better with uh, Atezo plus Bev compared to sunitinib. And in fact, that T effector signature is very much associated with PDL1 staining, not surprisingly. Uh, somewhat interesting within the sunitinib arm, patients who were angiogenesis high, had gene expression that was angiogenesis high, did much better than patients who were angiogenesis low. And, and it seems sort of obvious, right? More angiogenic tumors would respond to sunitinib, but we've been looking for a biomarker for, for sunitinib for over a decade. And so these are really compelling data, you know, in terms of the, the degree of difference in how patients did over time. Um, and then two other, two other things were looked at. So one was um, the Memorial Sloan Kettering risk groups. Those are risk groups that have been around for 20 or 30 years that look at clinical features and really segregate patients into good, intermediate, and, and poor. And the good risk patients, um, at least with some other immunotherapies, seem to do less well. Uh, and the intermediate and poor seem to do better with immunotherapy, at least clinically. So one thing that was found is that those favorable risk patients have a much more angiogenic phenotype, which really fits with um, some other data that suggests that VEGF agents have their best effect. And maybe immunotherapies don't work as well in favorable risk patients, at least by traditional measures such as response and progression-free survival.